The Gospel of Jesus Christ is the solution to the woes of man. How much of it you know, determines how well you reign in life. Join us. At Shepherd's Love Worldwide, opposite top radio, circle across, as the man of God, Apostle Johnsburg, takes us through sound teaching, and instruction in the Word, Shepherd's Love Worldwide, making Christ prominent, in our generation. And now, the man of God. Now, before before we, we, we do that, as you are looking through your notes, Something occurred to me, or I learned something this week, that this phrase in the Bible, fear not. Have you, heard, have you read your Bible and seen fear not? Yes, God even said that multiple times to Joshua. Fear not. The same way I was with Moses, I will be with you. Several times God told them, fear not, fear not. Do you know that that phrase, fear not, it occurs... 365 times in the Bible. 365 times in the Bible. So it means that every single day of your life, every single day of the year, because there are how many days in the year? So it means that every single day of the year, take one, fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Whatever will happen, fear not. Fear not. Is it the economy? Fear not. Fear not. Only fear not. Only fear not. What will make us not enjoy what God has said is when we fear. What will make us, what will resist what God wants to do is not God. It's when we, when we become afraid. You remember that the same sea was very boisterous. And then the Lord appeared to the disciples walking on the sea. And Peter says what? If it is you, let me come. Then the Bible said he came and he was walking. Then suddenly the Bible says what? Peter looked at the waves and became afraid. Then he began to sink. Then the Lord, he said, save me. He, he, he reached out to Jesus. Then he stretched out his hand and helped him and asked him, why did you fear? Why did you fear? So don't be afraid. No shaking. Have, have that mindset. No shaking. Send a meeting, no shaking. No shaking. Whatever will happen in this world, fear not. Whatever is going on around you, fear not. I said it will happen around us, but the Lord will not make it come into our dwelling. Fear not. Fear not. So that phrase occurs three, six, five times. It means, it means we are sorted for the whole year. The whole year, fear not. Fear, just close your eyes and walk. Do you, do you know how, re, how real the Red Sea was? To your friends who tell you, let's throw the word of God aside and face reality. I say, if you have a friend like that, tell them the friendship has ended. A friend who tells you, oh, you know, face reality. Do you know how real the Red Sea was? And God still told the man, lift your rod. Oh, you see, the instruction is in what God has said. That's where the solace is. Imagine people are chasing you. You've come near the sea. There's no place to run to. You have seen sea. People are coming. Where are you going to run to? And the Lord says, you see, this God, he says things that doesn't make sense. But you see, it is not making sense out of us. He's making faith out of us. The Bible said we walk by faith, not by what? So if you want to walk by sight, you will miss it. If you want to see it before you believe, when they say seeing is believing, don't, try, don't fall for these things. Don't fall for seeing is believing. Our life is not from seeing. Jesus told Thomas, you see, Thomas felt it. They told, they told him, the disciples said, we have seen the Lord. He said, oh, me, me, unless I, I see him, unless I feel his wounds, I will not believe. One day, the Lord, the Lord knew about it. One day, the Bible said he appeared to them. When he came, he said, Thomas. He didn't talk to anybody. When he said, peace be on you, then he said, Thomas, come and touch. The Bible said he came to feel everything. Then he knelt down. Nobody told him, this is God. He knelt down and said, my Lord and my God. Jesus now said, because you have seen it, you are believing. Blessed are those who have not seen, but have believed. 
So don't walk by those, their standards. You see, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We are in the, never think that we, have, we, we become so adjusted. You think, oh, we are like the men of the world. If they are saying, oh, now things are hard, times are hard, people are dying, then you should start wishing that for yourself. No. 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 You see, faith doesn't deny the facts. That, oh, we are living in denial. No, 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 no. Just that there's, uh, uh, there's something we have that these things that are happening don't have effect on us. Also, people are frustrated. Though. People are frustrated. People are, are, some are going mad. Some are depressed. But you see, it says we walk not by sight. We walk by faith. So close your eyes to the circumstances. They may be saying so many things about you. Close your eyes to what is happening and open your heart to his word. Your word is my truth. Everything else, you see, in a world of many voices, whose voice will you listen to? The voice of God's word or the voice of you can't do it. Oh, nobody has done this before in our family. Nobody has gone here before. So you, you also start thinking, oh, it can't be possible. You see, your, your, your reality is not somebody's reality. That you can't do it does not mean we can't do it. It's impossible until somebody has done it. So always, as you go through your day, whatever you are doing, don't be afraid. No shaking. No shaking. No shaking. No sh- there, there's a father we have. He said he takes care of the lilies of the field. How much more you? Ah, he said he closed the lilies. How much more you? It means not my issue to be thinking where the next meal will come from. It's not my duty. He said, how much more? You see, come to the word. Take the word and say, this is your word. I live by your word. I live by your word. The next 10 years of your life is sorted. sorted. It's sorted. Next 20 years, it's sorted. It's sorted. Times are hard. Times are hard. People are building on. Yeah. Hmm, you don't know. People are buying things. People are doing huge investments. One day you were sharing with Wesley Maureen. One day you were sharing with me that somebody called and said that um, they, had, they had been deducted a certain charge. And this charge, they felt like this one was too much. Previously, they said previously they've been deducting coins. So he didn't care. But this one there is like, it's too much. The coins was how much? 18,000 CDs. He said it's coin. He said that one, he didn't care about that. But this time they had deducted how much? 75,000 CDs. So this one, he felt like, ah, they have done too much. He said the the other ones were coins. (laughs) You see, sometimes, eh, you see, if you walk with God, Abraham didn't have a child. God said, father of nations. Ah, are you mocking him or what? I said, oh, Sereno. So make up your mind. And this is our father. We are his, we are his seed. So make up your mind that, you see, no matter what they say, I don't live by the times. I live by the government of heaven. My supply is from heaven. My supply is from heaven. David said, bless the Lord, O my soul. One of the things he said, he said, he satisfies your mouth with good things. You put the scripture there. He who satisfies your mouth with good things. He satisfies your mouth with good things. They can bring all the strategies. Oh, as for this season, you don't have to eat three times. A day. Who told you? No, just keep it for you and your family. As for me, he satisfies my mouth with good things. I said, your reality is not somebody's reality. Oh, oh you can put the scripture. God has been caring for men. Kejeblema. No be today. No be today. We are not the first people God is seeing. We are not going to be the last. So I, I always tell you, don't plan your life with your salary. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked to, to realize your salary can't do much. What God wants to do for you eh, is beyond salary. Yes, sir. Allow God to take care of you, brothers and sisters. Sister, be a baby girl for God. Right. Brother, be a baby boy for God. That is all. He said, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. What's your problem? I'm the good shepherd. Look at this. He says, bless the Lord. Oh, I thought you put the exact verse. 
while I'm talking, you are looking for where we stop, though, so that we just continue from there. Uh huh. Look at this. Okay, you you because you put verse one. Let's let's read verse one. Uh, you are Samuel. Let's read verse one. You are Samuel. You are. Who who is behind the console, Lady Eunice? Eh? Mm. Women, women, women. <laughs> I hope this doesn't offend anyone. It's, it's a joke. <laughs> you say, hey, I saw you being a, being a woman. Hey. <laughs> <We're>, hey. <laughs> women, women. You see, somebody says something, one man of God says something, and I, and I believe it. That you see that on the earth they have politics between parties and all that. You get it. Uh, but this life we are called into, like ministry and all that, it's a politics of spirits. Yeah, politics of spirit. So you go with what God has said. That's your backing. Out of nothing, God said, I've given you this nation. Go. People came and said, we can't take it. Caleb and Joshua said, we can. Let's go. They are bread for us. So your, your revelation, what gives you life, what gives you that energy to go through life is what God has said that you have taken personal. Learn to take his word personal. Else, any small challenge, you crumble. You come down. Look, he says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. It means this our God, they are benefits. That is why I said when people begin to do poverty, poverty, and they say it's humility, I say run away from them. They want to be, they say poverty, they want they are poor, then they think they are being humble. Hey, no, no, no. They say I came from a humble background. Hey, no, no. (laughs) No. The Bible said Jesus humbled himself even to the obedience of the cross. Not me again. Hey. Then I'll, I'll, I'll take poverty like a World Cup and finally get to heaven and see that all these big dons in the Old Testament, I'm going to meet them. People who had cattle like a, their time cattle, and I also. So they had plenty. They, God said, I'll bless you and make you a blessing. Hmm? You will see handsome guys in heaven. Do you know handsome? It means they, their hand has some, it has something. <laughs> We will meet them in heaven. Handsome. They are ha- handsome. His hand has something. <laughs> ah, make up your mind. Some of you sitting here, God intends by you to feed families. And you too, you, are, you want to be poor. No. God intends that by you, you will pay other people's school fees. One man, as one man. As one man, you transform nations. Look, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Uh huh. Who forgives all your iniquities? Oh. Who heals all your diseases? Oh. Verse 4. Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Verse 5. Who satisfies your mouth with good things? As you are serving God, no, my mouth is satisfied. My mouth is satisfied with good things. Good things. He satisfies my mouth with it. He's, look, he says, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I, I wish we could just read this verse in another translation and then we continue. Maybe one or two translations. Man of God, can you help us with a, a very good translation? Facilitator. Oh, just the verse 5. Verse 5. You satisfy my every desire with good things. You supercharged my life so that I saw again like a flying eagle in the sky. You satisfy my every desire. King James says, you satis- he satisfies your mouth with good things. Every day when you wake up, he satisfies my mouth with good things. My mouth is satisfied this week. My mouth is satisfied with good things. You leave the how to God. How it will happen. Leave that. That's his job. Me, my job is to believe. My job is to believe. Sea was boisterous. Peter could still walk on the boisterous sea. 
Now he took his eyes off Jesus and began to look around. He was going down. He, the Lord held him and said, why did you fear? What was keeping you on top was faith. You began to fear, now you are going down. Don't listen to them. Nowadays, I don't, I don't want the news and all that. You, you become depressed. It will depress you. I, I like to listen to sermons. Yeah, that's how, but the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. I don't want to listen to anything that will bring fear in my heart. Look at when COVID came, how they were saying it. You become afraid. When you are walking, you think, hey, are you going to die? Somebody is coughing around you. Hey! <laughs> like unconsciously, it will register in your heart. He wraps you in goodness. Oh, Marco, have you found one of Amplified. Oh, let's put that and then let's continue. <laughs> Who satisfies your mouth, your necessity, and your desire at your personal age and situation? Hallelujah. Your necessity. It means God knows our needs. God knows our needs. Your necessity and desire at your personal age and situation with good. He satisfies it with good. So what did we get to last week? Let's continue from there. We said he is our access, right? We started a series and we are continuing the in him realities. We said he's our access. What was the last scripture we read? What was there, please? John chapter 14, verse 13 to verse 14. So, brothers, fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. No shaking. No shaking. No shaking. If they like, let them take whatever price to anything. No shaking. Our God will take care of us. You see, those, those three boys, they said, they said, we will not bow down. We will not bow down. Even if our God doesn't save us, then, but we will not bow down. Then the Bible said they threw them into the fire. Then they came to check. People who were even throwing them died. Then they came to check the fire. They said they saw a fourth man in the fire with them. He looked like the son of man. When they came out, he said, Ooh, tell me about that, your God. Tell me about He came to sit in the fire with them. There, there's an Ewe song that says, the one who sat in fire and the fire became cold. <laughs> hey. Hey, people have tried this, our God. Oh. People have tried. They have worked with him like raw. No addition of anything. My mother said, my mother said, my father said. They did not add it. They just said, your word said. Look, whatever you ask in my name. So he's our access. He says, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the father may be glorified in the son. So he loves it when we what? When we ask, he says it even gives the father what glory. He, he is happy about it. He is happy when we ask. That is the access we have. We have a free pass because of Jesus. Not because of anything we have done or didn't do or should have done. It's because of what he did. You see, in my name. He says whatever you ask in my name. This also means that we have what? In, in legal terms, it's called the power of attorney. We have the power of attorney. Now, let me give you an example. One day, the Lord will bless you. Eh, and you will have maybe a property or properties. And then maybe you are not around at the moment. You will give maybe your son or whoever is close to you the power to act on your behalf. People do it. Let's say those in the U.S. and all that, they have some properties in Ghana. But they have selected somebody and they have legally given them the right to act on their behalf. That is what Jesus gave us. So when we ask using his name, it is as though he is the one doing it. He's the one asking. It's called the power of attorney. You, you, you may rent a property and you will not get it directly from the owner. It will be his intermediary. But his intermediary has the right to act on his behalf. Whatever he says is what the owner will say. 
so he gave us that same authority, that same power of attorney to act on his behalf by giving us his name. So he says, whatever you ask in my name, not in your own name. He says, whatever you ask in my when you when you use the name of Jesus, it's not in the mentioning. Last week I told you that you see that there's a way that a lie becomes popular so much that when the truth comes, the lie it looks like hey, the truth looks like hey, what is this? An example is you you help me find the scripture and put it there. It says that. At the mention of the name Jesus, every knee will what? It's in Philippians, right? Philippians chapter 2. It says that at the men, that's what we always say, at the mention of the name Jesus. If you read your Bible well, you take your Bible serious like it must be taken, you will see that mention is not there. You won't see mention. So who taught us mention? So who, who, who is the person who came to teach us that at the mention of the name Jesus? Okay, let's read verse 9. Let's read from verse 9. You see it for yourself, oh please. It's important you see it. You have to see it for yourself, else you will be deceived. See it for yourself. When you go back to go and check it for yourself. Now he says, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name, the name which is above every name. One day the Lord told me that if you are going to do well in this work I've called you, especially healing the sick, don't listen to the name of the disease. Don't care about the name of the disease. So that you know that naturally, naturally, if you are going to pray for somebody and the person has headache, you don't worry so much. Naturally. But if it's cancer, you begin to think, so it will drag your faith. It will, it will be a contention for your faith. You get it. But what you have to know is that it's, it's not the name of whatever thing they are saying. There's a name which is above what? Every name. So what is the name of that thing the doctor said? There's a name above that name. Look, he says, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name. Not one of the names. It means the name of Jesus is what? Oh, you are, you are not reading. Oh, you are sleeping. The name of Jesus is the name, the name, the name. The name, the name. If he had said, he had given him a, a name, it means that it's one of the names. This is English language. It means the name of Jesus is one of the names. There are several names. He has given him also one. But this one, he said he has given him the name. It means that's the only thing. This is a definite article there. The name above, the name which is above every name. Which is above. So once, once anything has a name, we have a name above it. Now look at verse 10. This is where the, the confusion starts. That's at the name of Jesus. Did you see mention? So who taught us? Who taught us that, that at the mention of the name Jesus, so that if you don't mention it, if you don't mention it, it's not working? No. Have you noticed that one man, because there are several languages in the world, one man, his name is differently pronounced in different languages. Some say Yesu, Yeshua, blah, blah, blah. But you see, the secret is not in the mentioning. The secret is the authority, your revelation of the authority in the name. Do you have revelation in that name? Why? An example is, one day in, in Acts chapter 19, the Bible said that Apostle Paul did so much miracles in the city. People saw it. They even brought aprons from the sick. They, 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 they brought aprons and touched him with it and put the aprons on the sick. And they were healed in Acts 19. Then the Bible said there was a man called Skiva. His sons saw what was going on and they thought, hey, are they bad? Let us also try it. Let's, 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 let's go to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Some of our brethren, when you just mentioned, they, they, they read so much Twitter news. So you have to go back and read to them so that at least they too will know. 
I've met Christians and who say, oh, uh, you know that Bible story, right? <laughs> yeah, they just talk about something. They say, but you know that Bible story, right? <laughs> like, we should all know it. <laughs> Every day. Take the word of God serious. Every single day. Every single day. You see, there's no grace. Like, there's no, it's not a gift of the Spirit. You have to actually discipline yourself. Somebody said, me, I can't read anything without pictures in it. Ooh. The Bible, when I take that, I'm feeling sleepy. When you take the Bible now, you are feeling sleepy. But when you take your phone, you don't feel sleepy. Your lecture notes, your slides. When you take, when you take the Bible like this, you say, me, me the Bible, they may fall now, me person may down. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, verse 12. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them. And the evil spirits went out of them. So they brought handkerchiefs, touched his body and put on the sick. Verse 13. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits. Some people voted for themselves elected themselves and said, ah, what we have seen happen with Paul. He's a man like us. I mean, nonsense. We can also do it. You see? Some people, some people, some people may see maybe a, somebody, a Christian, let me not use a man of God, a Christian, walking in a certain dimension and may think, ah, this guy was my engineer in school. This guy was my engineer in school. I can also do that. Some even think, I'm older than him. Hey, when it comes to the things of the spirit, age doesn't matter. Oh. You see, there's a difference between your age in time and your age in light. You have age, this, this is earthly age. Your birthday will come and go. But when it comes to light, the revelation of the truths of God, that one, we are on different ages. You see, so that somebody can, somebody has meditated, uh, meditated on God's word and he comes out and he says, I will not lack again. <laughs> I will not lack again. You two may now go and now say that because he said, I will not lack again. He was my engineer in school. Me too, I will not lack. You'll be shocked. <laughs> You'll be shocked. The light he has caught from the word, the light he has seen from the word, says, no way, it will not happen to me. It will not happen to me. Bishop Oedipo found a scripture and he got up and said, I found it. <laughs> he said, I found it. What I've been looking for, I found it. When you study the word, uh, light will hit your eyes. Something will become real. The Bible will not just be a written book again. A verse will be real to you. It will be personal. Now, they saw Paul that, hey, they even brought handkerchief. They, they just came for glory. Oh. They thought, hey, Charlie, hey, look how everybody's going around him. Let me also do some. Like how some people talk. One day, we, recently we met somebody who said, hey, right now, dear, if you don't do politics, you have to do ministry because you get people and take their money. And I said, oh, start a church. <laughs> hey, it's, start, it's not plenty talking, oh, start a church. If you can gather two people consistently, I'll drop the microphone. Start a church. This thing is not math. Hey, and yet your beings. Because, trust me, it's about the, the destinies of people. If I tell you that, go to Canada, go and apply to Canada, or Canada embassy or visa or whatever, and you go and apply, and God has not said it, I've messed you up. So, let me give you an example. One of the brothers during the all night, I said, go and look for an offering and give to your parents, give to your mother. Do you know yesterday he texted me, said, I'm going to Kumasi. If God has not told me, I've changed his location at once. So he's in Kumasi now. But you see, God has told me. So I just texted him, okay, do it like this. That's all. It is done. Go ahead, when, you are, when you are done, just go and celebrate. That's all. Eradin Kainaudi Agra. You and the guy, all of you, you are in, you are in hot soup. So in the way they say, hey, the way they can celebrate one person, Enunti, you want to enter into it, you enter and see that it's not all celebration. No. It's not all celebration. 
So these guys were like that. They saw that, ah, look at Paul too. Ah, nonsense. Probably some were even older. So they came and said they took upon themselves. They, they voted for themselves. They elected themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. They didn't know Jesus themselves. They just said, we are casting you out by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. So they, they didn't, in the equation, they didn't know the man personally. They just said, a dinner Paul used, you know, yes, yeah, you see almost so. Look at it, verse 14. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. Sceva's seven sons were the ones doing that. Look at verse, verse 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> I know Jesus. So when you saw Paul doing that, it's because they know that hey, this guy there, if you joke, you can't, we can't say we will not go. We, we couldn't tell Paul we couldn't go because we know him. We know that hey, if we don't go, so we have to actually just go. When Paul was casting them out, it's because they knew him. Evil spirit. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. And you see, I'm always comforted by this. I'm preaching the same message Paul preached. So I know that. <laughs> you know, look at the testimony of an evil spirit. Jesus, I know. So when they say we are thieves, I don't mind. Because they, they, look. Look, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? So it's a personal thing. What revelation have you got from the word? It's a personal thing. You don't just venture into it. They ventured. They almost died. Look at verse 16. Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them. One man against seven brothers. He leaped on them. He, one person against seven. He leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. One person could handle seven people. It means the demon gave him so much strength. The demon has so much strength. He could handle, he could handle all of them like this. I'm sure he handled three here. Three here, one person in front with his leg. <laughs> he gave it to them, wounded them. I told you the story how those days when I was now growing fresh, fresh, fresh. I met a lady and tried to preach the gospel to her. And the lady said, I cannot be born again. I said, hey, you cannot be born again. Then, oh, then I'm not coming to buy the Indomie again. You must be born again. She said, I cannot. And I'm sure people who were looking around may think, <clears throat> I'm trying to take her number. But that was not it. She said, she cannot be born again. I said, hey, you cannot. I've never received this answer before. <laughs> you are the first person telling me you cannot be born again. I said, wow, why? I need to get to the bottom of this matter now. Then it became tenacious. She held my shirt. It's like a lady, but something strong. Her life, there are so many spirits around. She held my shirt. Like you, you couldn't feel this was a lady. It's like something was in her. He held my shirt. And automatically, a fear came over me. Fear. My first reaction was I was afraid. And I wanted to remove my shirt and run away. At least, I'll come and fight another day. <laughs> that was my only reaction, to remove my shirt and run away. But immediately that thought came to my mind. I heard, this, I heard the voice. I heard it so clear. I remember. He said, I am with you, even to the end of the age. I heard it so clear. Then he said, touch her back. So I took my hand to put behind, and she kept doing this. I knew, ah, that's my secret. That's my secret. Until I did it, she became very calm. Then I prayed the gospel. I said, lift your hands. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You will not believe. That day, the Indomit was free for us. <laughs> it was free. It was free. Now, Indomit ran away from Jesus. Yeah. Look, so if you don't know this, he jammed on them. They ran away naked. I made your way. Naked. Naked. So, the secret is not in the mentioning. You, you, you see, they tried mentioning the name. They went and said, we, we command you 
in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. So the secret is your revelation of the power in the name. How well do you know the power that is in that name? So that everybody can be saying Jesus, Jesus, but somebody's own will work. Another person's own will not work. That is why back to Philippians chapter 2 verse 10, you don't see mention. You see at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Back to Philippians chapter 2. That at the name. So when somebody tells you at the mention of the name, you are like, hey, Bema. The passion. Okay, Please give us a passion. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, God bless you. 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 Look, the authority of the name of Jesus, you see, is not the mentioning, it's the authority that is put in the name, the authority that is loaded in the name. So, you have to know the authority that is in his name, then it can work for you. You don't just have to, Jesus, 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 oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Oh, you don't know anything about it. You will be like the sons of Sceva. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who who are you? So, you have to rather learn about the authority that is in that name. Not just calling out the name. So this, the authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee. So it is the authority that causes every knee to bow. Else, else, look at this. There are many South Americans called Jesus. There are footballers called Jesus. But why is it that when we say Jesus, it is not them? There's a player for Man City. He's called Gabriel Jesus. Jesus. They say Jesus, but they pronounce it Jesus. And there are several of them. I'm sure some of them are in the movie industry and all that. Like, it's a normal name when you go there, Jesus. It's a normal name. So why is it that when we say Jesus, it's not the guy living in Sao Paulo, far away in Brazil, or the guy living in Argentina? Because they, they mostly have these names. But when we say Jesus, we are talking about the Nazarene, Jesus from Nazareth, Jesus, the son of the living God. So, it's the authority in the name. You have even heard people called Kofi Yesu yeah. in Ghana. Kofi Yesu. You see? So, it's not the mentioning of the name. It's, it's knowing the authority in the name. That is what will make the name work for you. And you see, the authority in that name is our access. That's our free pass. I said it's called it's, it's also called the power of attorney. When somebody when someone gives you that power, it means that you have authority to act in the person's name. So you have to know that authority. You don't have to just learn to pronounce the name. Learn the authority. Else you can say Yeshua Hamashiach, nothing will happen. You know, some people feel like if they, they, they want to leave the Jesus, Jesus is too common. They want to leave, so they will say Yeshua Hamashiach, so that you look like they are super. It's not the Yeshua Hamashiach. <laughs> Some people in the night, they can't sleep. The, the demons may bring sleep paralysis in the night. Sleep paralysis. Medically, they'll have a name for everything. They'll say, oh, it's something your ventricle couldn't do this, and something something happened to your follicles, and this happened. But what if you go and check, pa, it's a demon on your bed holding you. Recently, it happened to me. About... Three or four Sundays ago, somebody was pushing me on my bed on a Sunday. Somebody, on my bed, oh, somebody was struggling with me on my bed. I wanted to get up. I couldn't get up. I wanted to get up from the bed. And Lady Jemima was in the other room. I couldn't even shout. So it happens to some people in the night. And they, in the night, it feels like somebody is struggling. It's like somebody is trying to, oh, they are pressing your neck. And you want to say Jesus is not coming. You say, Look, so the authority, look at this. The authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and everyone will one day submit to this name. 
in the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and in the demonic realm. The name of Jesus, when, you see, when you know what the name carries and you mention it, there's no time for negotiation. Now, assuming that it's in the evening, let's say this meeting was in the night, not daytime, all this place will be all dark. You won't see this light or that. Assuming it's in the night. And I ask them, please, can you turn off the light? We turn off the light, the place will become darker. Right? No light, no phone, nothing. All lights off. The whole place will be very dark. Now, when I ask Sir Lewis, Sir Lewis, go and turn on the light. When he turns on the light, darkness doesn't say, I will not go. The darkness in the room doesn't say, oh, wait, or you see it fading out. Once the light is turned on, but you don't know where the darkness goes. It just vanishes. Once we know the authority in the name of Jesus, and we, we use that authority, bam, no devil can say, why did you call that name? Why? He said, Jesus, I know. He will start running. Your boy used to do Omudim Rikaneku. When we mention it in the right way, knowing the authority that is in it. So you, you, you know the authority that is in the name of Jesus, that this name, Charlie, this name, this name, and I be in your On your business, you will say it and say, ah, if it's a contract you are expecting, you take the proposal or whatever and say, ah, I call the name of Jesus over this. By the authority in the name, this contract will go through. Nobody. Because there are some people, eh, when they are about to hit a jackpot, let's say a contract, somebody will go and mess their name up. Somebody will just go and say, oh, don't favor this person. Hey, they are, actually, life is some way. There are people when somebody can get up and say, oh, Seshop, I want to do you good. I want to do you good. Then suddenly they change their mind. You don't say it's normal. It's not normal. Suddenly he just changes his mind. Then one day he'll see you again and say, yeah, I want to do you good, but I don't know. Something just... Something just resists me. And you two, so they resist Rebecca, Rebecca. Hey, I'm cool. Now, back to what we are saying. So, back to John 14 again. So, it's not the mentioning of the name. It's knowing the power behind the name. That this name is endued with power. This name has all the power in the universe. When we call this name with the power that is in it, it means we are bringing all of heaven into that matter. When we call the name of Jesus, with all the power that is in it, it means we are bringing the, the armor, everything that God has, the highest ammunition of God into that situation. That's why many, many just pray and miss. They don't get anything. They say, ah, Jesus, Jesus. And they go. But once you know it, you know that when I call the name of Jesus in this thing, it means I've summoned all the weapons of God into the matter. It will work. I've brought God into this business. I've brought God into my career. It will work. It will work. So he says, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So he, he loves it when we ask. He says, the Father is glorified in the Son. So when we are asking, he says, it's like we are glorifying the Father what? In the Son. Look at verse 14 again. Verse 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. You see, the word of God is either yes or no. But it is yes. He says his word is yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. He says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. What's your problem again? Eh. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Please read, read, read the tree Bible to us. Many people, they like tree. Do you have Ghana Bible? Can you read Ghana? Please, microphone, please. Sometimes you have to bring the word of God home. Home. <laughs> you have to bring the word home to the people. I wish we have in Zima Bible and Ewe and all that, so that somebody will read it. So that some of our brethren, Ebi and I, Ekabro, Funa, Unt, 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 ni no no read you see how i'm talking talk like that ni no no ni nya pa he fai ye mi gbe em lile ma fe koni chele hien aba nyam 
kecho bile no. See, so the father is glorified. That's what he says. Onye ni onyam. I want to ban him. So ye bisana. Now go to verse fourteen. Uh huh. I don't understand what you read, but I just know that that's what the English says. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> But it's true, uh, it's true, right? Yes, it's yeah, true. It's true. Mm. Mm. This one makes it look like if you beg. Yes. But we are not begging. Okay, anyway. Mm. Okay, okay. Please read, read your tree. Is there another language? Does somebody speak another language? That once you raise your hand, you read it to me. <laughs> So, Unima, just say, I'm okay with this too. <laughs> if you say in Zima, they'll put in Zima, they will pass the microphone to you. If you don't, if you lie to us. <laughs> Please. Now, Bibiara, ah, Mubebisa, Womidin, Muno. Meye, Amamu. You are reading another. Yes. That's Asante. Yes. Okay, there are different versions. Okay, read what you have. Now, Bibiara, ah, Mubebisa, Womidin, Muno. Meye, Amamu. Said ye a bear ah, a janua new yam yam ne banny super deadi. Bibiara ah, modi me deem baby sano, may ye a mamma. Bibiara modi me deem baby sano. Send ye a bear a janny new yam bed deadi. Eh, it means ye be sana, a janny new yam a de bain, a deadi. Oh, this God. This God, he, he, he wants to do us good. Oh, oh, you have not realized up to this point. He wants to do you good. I said, be a baby boy for God. Eh? When you are working, you say, Charlie, the pressure on me, the pressure on oh, the assembly can so oh, Charlie, Charlie, the, this life, no balance. Don't join them. Your problem is you are joining, you see, don't follow your friends, follow God. Ah, your friends are saying it. Oh, she say, she say the pressure will move now soon. Pressure, pressure. Pressure. Take the word. Take the word. This is what your word is saying. Everybody says, those who believe your word, nowadays they say, those who believe your word, they are foolish people. I'm foolish enough to believe your word. Until they see your word, your word has made me what it talks about. Now they say it's Benin. So me, I'm foolish enough to believe your word. Me, dear, Meiji. Meiji. So back to what let's read. Have we read? Um, we have read Ephesians 2:16, Ephesians 3:18, 3:8, Hebrews 10:19. Have we read that? Please let's read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to verse 23. It says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness, we are still on the point that Jesus is what? We have access in him. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Brethren, having what? Boldness. You see, now because of the sacrifice of Jesus, we have what? Boldness to come to God. In the, in, the, in the Old Testament, the holiest, you see, they, they had, they, the temple was divided. The holiest place, right, the, 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 the place where the Spirit of God was, only the chief priests can go there. Only the high priests can go there. And he goes there, he, go there, he goes there um, once a year. He goes there once a year. One, and the Bible says, even that one, when he's going, he goes with the blood of, of animals, as a sacrifice for himself and for the whole nation once a year. But now, because of Jesus, he says, we have boldness. And when he's going, you don't know. He's not going with boldness. Because you don't know what, what will come out. It can be good or bad. So when you are going, you are going in anxiety. When the high priest is going. And you know what the Bible says? He's the only one who has the authority to go to that place. Nobody can go there. So what happens is that when he's going, they put pomegranates and things around his garment. And then bells. So as he's offering the incense and all that, and walking around, we may hear that he's still alive because of the noise 
that the, the bells will make, right? Now, and then we have a rope tied around his garment. Because what if he goes there and the whole nation has sinned? And then he dies in the place. Because it happens like that. So they put a rope. When he dies there, they pull, because we don't have the right to go there. You can't say he's dead. We don't have the right to come, but we are coming to carry his body. No, no, it's only him that has the authority to go there. So what happens is that should he die, should the high priest die in the holiest place, they pull him out with a rope. But if we can hear the bells ringing from his garments, we know that, oh, he's still alive and our offering is what? Accepted. But now, we don't need all of that again because of Jesus, our high priest. There's a better high priest who has come. Now, the priesthood is not with Levi and his children again. The Levitical priesthood has ended. The Bible says Jesus came as a priest with a different order. And that order is the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is the one, nobody knew his, the beginning of his days, nor end of his days. The Bible says he met Abraham. They didn't know his father or mother. He just came. He met Abraham and he blessed him. Jesus is the priesthood according to that order. It means his priesthood will never end. Unlike the children of Levi, the Levites. Their priesthood had an end. And it ended when Jesus, Jesus died, Jesus was buried, and Jesus rose again. It ended. And now we have, we have, and it says, we go to the holiest place now because of the blood of Jesus. You see, the high priest will go with the blood of bulls and all that. But now we go with a better blood. The blood that speaks better things. Better things. Look, therefore, brethren, now, what has happened to is that those days the high priest can go and he's going, he's afraid. He, because he too doesn't know whether he will go and die. So he's going, he doesn't go with boldness. He goes, Italy, what if I don't come back? So probably there will be some high priests, as they are going, they may be giving their last words to their wives and children. In case I don't come, please, the land over here, share it to this one. But all that has ended. He says, now when we are going, we enter with what boldness. Brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest place by the blood of Jesus, uh -huh, and by a new and a living way. You see, there was an old way. But this new way that has come because of Jesus, he says, it is a new. If you still want to serve God like you are under the law, you are using the old method. There's a new and a living one. You are using something which is old and dead. This is all we are telling men. A new and a living way has come. Why hold on to an old and dead way? Look, by a new and a living way, which he, Jesus, consecrated for us. Hallelujah. Not for himself. Through the veil, that is his flesh. We have a new way. He consecrated that way for us. He says, through the veil, that is his flesh. The Bible said when he died, the, the veil in the temple tore. In those days, you couldn't go there. You can't go and stand there and say, oh, you feel like worshiping God, so they should open the veil for you. They ask you, are you high priests? First, they ask, are you priests? Because the priests, they go daily. Then even the priests, they have the high one who goes to a particular place once a year. So they ask, ah, open some sumyami. Sumyami of here. But when Jesus died, the Bible said the veil tore. Now, we don't need a pass. We don't need to be high priest to come to that holy place again. Now, because of Jesus, we have a new and a better way. The veil is torn. All can now come in. It's not for a particular group of people. The songwriter said, he opened the life gates that all may go in. To God be the glory, great things he has done. We sing it at weddings. When they are done and they are coming out. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Then they are, they are greeting their families. Then they are, they are using their hand with their ring on it. Hey, you! Hey, you came! <laughs> but it has, it has a simple truth of the gospel. He says, he opened the life gates that all may go in. He opened, you see, that, you see, our, our, everything is Jesus. 
he came and opened the thing that, ah, he say there's not some people, everybody coming. He says, now he brought a new and a living way, which he consecrated. Remember, we come now with what? Boldness. Because of the access we have through him and his blood, we come boldly. Anybody who says, come to God and, hey, yeah, they are poor. Hey, they, are, they are just religious people. Come to God. Talk to God. Because of Jesus, you can talk to God. Oh, Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you. You don't come to God and you're afraid. You're afraid. You're afraid of what? That's what, that's what the Spirit of God will ask you, like, why are you afraid again? Look, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, 21. So his flesh became what? The veil. His body was broken so that we'll, we'll go inside. His body was broken for us. At the communion, we say his body was broken. He, the body was broken. I'll never be broken again. It's not humility for me to say I'll be broken when the master has been broken. Oh, oh. If Jesus couldn't give a better offering, is it you, Kwamina, who will give a better offering? Ah! I mean, look at this. And having a high priest over the house of God, Jesus is now our high, high priest. On, now Jesus is our soft opinion. And having a high priest over the house of God, let's look at it together. Verse 22, please. Let us draw near with a true heart, full in assurance of faith. Let us now come with assurance. When they say have assurance, what does it mean? Be certain in your heart. When you, are, when you are now approaching, be come with assurance. First, you came on setting. The high priest came on setting, but he says, now be setting. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. You see, you see the issue is, you may still be thinking, hey, what, as you are going, hey, this guy, does he, does he still have something against me or what? You see, they say your conscience. You say your guilty conscience. You see, he says, so have your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience. And the sprinkling will come with the word. This word I'm teaching you to take that conscience out of your heart. That, oh, he doesn't, you see, God is not mad at me. He's madly in love about me. You see, God is not mad with me again. Oh, he's not annoyed. So he says, it's a conscience matter. So you say, have your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. The word of God is the pure water. Not Vortic, not Kupak. Our heart washed with pure water. Uh -huh. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Oh, you see, now because of Jesus being our access, we know that, oh, here is a faithful God. When we come to him, we come in assurance. First, we come in boldness. We come bold knowing that, oh, base. The, between us and God, there is no fight. Remember, one day we read, recently, in our study, we read that we have peace with God. Now we, so because of that, our conscience is not evil. We know ah, we have peace. God and us, there are no issues. There are no issues. We don't have any issues, so we can come with boldness. We can come with full assurance of faith, knowing that, and look, he says, we can, he says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Let nobody deceive you. Don't say this, tomorrow say another thing. We cannot waver. To waver is you are not sure. I say, I don't eat that. He loves me today. Tomorrow he doesn't love me. Hey, do you think God loves you? Look at the hair you are wearing. Look at the wig. Every poise. Look at the wig. Your wig you are wearing is from under the sea. And, and mommy water, there was a time they said mobile phone was from the sea. Until now, all the churches have mobile phones. Uh, you see, let us, let us do what he has asked us to do. That is to preach the gospel, disciple men. That is our work. That's, my work is not to teach you food and nutrition. University of Ghana is there. University of Ghana is there. I said, we can gather people and teach them soap making. 
Gary processing, yogurt making, all these things are good. But you see, the best work is to preach the gospel and to raise men. That's what he has asked us to do. When, he, when we stand before him, he won't, he won't say, hey, thou good and faithful Gary maker. You see, because, because many don't know what we have to say, that's why they delve into all these things and then confuse the people. Like mobile phone is from hell. Oh! Now all of us have mobile phones, so we are all communicating from hell. <laughs> Facebook is from the devil. Now lockdown came. All the churches, listen, this message we are preaching now is live on Facebook. Uh, am I saying there are no demonic groups on Facebook? There are demonic groups on Facebook. But am I saying Facebook no. You see, those ones are not part of what he has asked us. When you go into those things, you'll not be confusing the people. Somebody said, football is not good. Hey, there was a woman. Recently, she was trending. They said, Mami Gio. And people were listening to her. They said, oh, fo- football, if you play football, you are playing the head of John the Baptist. <laughs> you hey. I've told God that, I've told God that when, 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 when my children come, eh, they are either in ministry or they are, they are, they are football. It's like if, if God has called any of my children, there are no, no issue. It will be some way, but no issue. Because I would have loved that football. Like f- football, a week. <laughs> a week. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> a week. Right now, if the Lord asks me, what, what, if, if I say ministry, or I want to add something for you to I say, make me an agent. <laughs> make me an agent. <laughs> hey! Make me an agent. If, if one day I have a child, the Lord says that I've called your, your son. I don't have anything to say. Because football. Hey! A week, you are just waiting for Friday or Sunday, or whenever they pay. Hey! You just see the money, 300,000 pounds. Every week, yeah, there are some footballers. Zero, 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 they have been posting him. Football alone from Manchester United, he gets over 500,000 pounds a week. That's his salary. Bonuses have been come. Before contracts he has with other people, you know, Herbalife, he does advert for Herbalife and all those things. Hey, Manchester United alone, salary, 500 and something thousand pounds. Let's go here. <laughs> So on Friday, I told you that if God should ask me, what are the four things on your heart? <laughs> He'll be shocked. <laughs> when people say, oh, ministry, that, tell it, it's not like that. Oh. Have you seen that check in the office before? Have you seen it? 500,000. I said, if somebody should give 500,000, I'll kneel there and say, pray for me. <laughs> lay hands, lay hands. Man of God, lay hands. <laughs> My pastor said it to He said, anybody who bring this amount, I said, I said, I'll kneel down. He said, how did you do it? Lay hands, lay hands. Preach to me, preach to me, preach. <laughs> <laughs> and amazingly, you are taking this amount of money a week. Nothing is affecting it. And you are worried that you are not playing. Me, worried. <laughs> you are worried that they didn't start you. Me. Oh, big man. I will be there telling them. <laughs> All I need is the week you end. Because it's a week. It's weekly wages. It's a wage. Anyway, back to what we are. So, it says we should hold fast our confession of faith without wavering. For faithful is he who has promised. He is faithful who has promised. Uh-huh. Let's, let's read another scripture. Let, let's see another point, please. I think I will I'll be closing soon. So, aha, uh-huh, okay, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Have we mentioned that? Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians chapter 3. Hey, is he serious? Hmm, imagine you have a son who is a footballer and not playing in Ghana. No, 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 no. Like playing, you are seeing him, EPL, every week. He's in a, a big team and they are paying him even 200,000. They leave the rest, 200,000 every week. Hey. Serious. <laughs> there, there, there was a Ghanaian player called Kevin Prince Boatin. One time he was playing for Manchester City. And he said that in one day he bought three Bentleys. One day, which is salary. One, one day he bought pink, blue, 
<laughs> like different colors. Now he says, Oh, he wasted that money. Now I am collaging. Adebayo will tell you that he has not finished spending the money he got from us now. He has not finished spending it. You see how he could dash Range Rover? In? If it's not money, do you think he could dash Range Rover? <laughs> Serious. Though. So I've told God that, God, at least you're one of my children. <laughs> it's my hard desire. <laughs> It's my heart desire. Oh, see, you have to be intentional. <laughs> You'll be there. He said, I, I said, I asked somebody, what, what, do you, what do you want the Lord to do for you? He said, wisdom and knowledge. Hey, <laughs> you want wisdom and knowledge? <laughs> you want wisdom and knowledge? <laughs> you, don't, you don't have a problem. <laughs> hey, wisdom and knowledge. <laughs> and the way the world is going, <laughs> you want wisdom and knowledge? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I've told God that at least one of my sons should be a footballer. You dear, you if not for any, one of my sons, you dear, he should be a footballer, a very well-known footballer. You just, <laughs> I don't want. You see, Obobo, then he's coming from the area. The just the top is different from the down. No, 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 no. <laughs> I used to go and watch. I used to go and watch Monday special in our area. Monday special. They don't even have jerseys. When they are substituting somebody, he removes the verses when we sweat, squeezes it, and gives to the next person. I don't want that one. I don't. I don't want that one. Some of them can be wearing Liverpool shorts and another top because it's red, and they are just going. They just use pen to write the number. No, 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 Father, a well-known one, because of something. May they take me hot to be so. <laughs> Anyway, back here. So, he says, and whatever you do in word or deed, I hope you are not offended. <laughs> and whatever you do in word or deed, <laughs> do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. He says, whatever we do what? In word or deed. So, whatever we do in word or in our actions, he says, we should do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, this verse doesn't mean that anything you are doing, go mentioning the name of Jesus. No. No. It means whatever you do, do it in the authority of Jesus. Because the, the word there, we have mentioned it several in church, onoma. O-N-O-M-A. That's a Greek word for name in this, in this verse. The Greek word uses onoma. O-N-O-M-A. Onoma, it means authority. So whatever you do in word or deed, do it in the authority of Christ. Do it in So that's why I tell you, never do a thing and think, oh, this one day, I don't really think it's, a, it's an issue. I should bring God into it. No. Oh, it's just relationship. Relationship, who needs God for relationship? Oh, business too, you need God. Pastor, that's my church life. Hey, it go shock you. So he's just telling that everything you are doing, do it in the authority of Jesus. Do it in the authority of Jesus. He says, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So whatever you are doing, do it in the, the authority of Jesus. Do it. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do it in his authority. Don't do that business. Qua. Don't do that thing. Oh, pastor, a guy proposed marriage to me. I, I think I'm, I'm aging. So I've accepted to marry him. A marriage, we don't really need God for marriage. Oh, Pastor, I mean, come on. Marriage, you don't really need God. Who told you? Ah, Pastor, but schooling, who needs God for schooling? I'm just going to the lectures. I mean, you'll be shocked. So he says, whatever you do in word or deed means action. I, 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 if you can get us a modern verse, the men and women of God in the house, if you can get us a modern verse, that is saying what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Is this, you say what? Passion. Okay. Let every activity of your life, you see, every activity, every, whatever you, don't think this one, this one, I don't think God should know. Let every activity of, our, of your lives and every word that comes from your lips be drenched with the beauty of our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. And bring your constant praise to God the Father because of what Christ has done for you. Anything you are doing, he says, do it with the authority of Jesus. Do it with the authority of Jesus. Sometimes we, we may crack a joke about something which the word of God doesn't support. You may think, oh, it's just a joke. No. 
Have you seen a, a, a translation you think? NLT. Please put NLT. And whatever you do or say, uh -huh. do it. Hey, today you are on point. So. <laughs> today you are on point. The grace is with you. Whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus. You see, anything you are doing, anything you are doing, do it as his rep. Do it as his rep. Giving thanks through him to God the Father. Do it as his rep. Don't just leave anything bizarre. No. You are a rep for Jesus. You are a rep. You are a rep. Everywhere you go, you are his rep. So do it as his rep. Anything you are doing, do it as his rep. When you enter the office, don't just enter like one of the, the, the clients or the staff or whatever. When you enter the place, don't just join. Oh, they are saying this, they are saying that, they are doing this. No, well, you are there as a rep. What you are doing, what you are doing is secondary. This, who you are is the primary thing. What you do is secondary. Who you are is the primary thing. Primarily, you are his rep. It must affect everything you are. He says, everything you are doing, do it in the authority of Jesus. Do it in his authority. Let's, let's look at another. It's, it's even the same. This point I'm about to mention is even the same like access because it's still authority. So I don't know whether we should just continue or we should just take it as another point. That in him we have authority. Access, it looks like the same. So I don't know whether we should continue. Look chapter 10 verse 19. I don't know whether we should name it another point. Over here, I, I put another point. We have authority in him. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. If you don't mind, you can make it one. It's still like access. Because access has to do with authority. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. The Lord himself talking, he says, Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Hey, now that you are born again, and you have power who? There is power in, in you. There is power resident in you. The Bible says that to him that is able to do exceedingly, abund it says exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that is in us. It means there is power where? In us. And you see, is the power in you, the revelation of the power in you is what God will act on. That's why I said when you take two Christians and you check their results, it's not that God loves one more than the other. The only difference is that one has exercised himself in the things of God well, better than the other person. Probably the other person doesn't have time. There are many Christians who are like Martha, running around the whole place, trying to do this, trying to do that. And then there are some who are like Mary, just seated at the feet of Jesus, listening. They are, some, they are just like Martha. They go to the kitchen, cut small onion, cut small indomie, cut small sausage. Trying to, they are just trying to serve. Like, like they are trying to just do everything. Trying to be everywhere. They are just trying to do everything. Learn how to cook jollof. You know, you know that, that. Ask your neighbor, do you know spring grow? <laughs> what is that? So there are some Christians like that, that they are busy about everything. And then there are some like Mary, just seated at the feet of Jesus, soaking his word. She came to report, my sister won't help me. Look at what she's doing. This girl, she's a lazy girl, but she's being obedient. Lazy girl. And she thought Jesus would say, my friend, get up and go and help. Sister, sister, I'm in pay pressure. Go and help. My friend, one, two, three, go and help. Jesus said, Martha, he says, you are worried about many things. So, be, be, from the words of Jesus, we can see that her worry at that point was not just the food. Because Jesus said, you are worried about many things. Many things. If it was just food, he would have just said, why are you worried about this? But he said, many things. It means beyond food, she was worried about maybe her finances too. Maybe something else, childbirth. Maybe something. He says, you are worried about many things. Mary has chosen the good part. And it will remain with her. 
She has chosen the good path. So you to make up your mind to do what? Choose the good path. Go through this life with his word. Go through this life with his word. Your, your emotions may not agree. But let your emotions know that, you see, the word of God is bigger than what I'm feeling. I'm feeling something, yes, but the word is bigger than it. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Not over some of the power of the enemy. It says over all the power of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. This is NLT. You can walk among snakes and scorpions. Nothing will injure you. It means there's no power from the devil that can harm us. But you see, it, it first begins with having a revelation of this truth. Else you will go like the sons of Skiva. And you may come back with a different report that they harmed you. Because you just went. You just went. Look, I have given you authority. When I got born again, and then I was now becoming active in the things of God. Somebody called me aside and said that, you see, this thing you are taking World Cup. We see, there are people who may talk to you. Sometimes when you want to stretch your faith, your loved ones and co may now be saying, hey, this thing, dear. You see, we are all Christians, but you are doing it too much. Slow down. It's, that's not how you do it. That's not how. They, they try to bring you back. So somebody called me and said, hey, this church, church thing and this one you are taking serious. No? Relax, else you become a target for the devil. That's what the person told me. He said, you become a target for the devil. So relax, don't be too involved. We are, we, ah, I'm also an usher in my church, but you, the way you are doing it, you are overdoing it. So it looks like the person is giving you good advice. It looks like the person is, is giving you good advice. It looks like, you see, there are two kinds of people. There are two, look, there are, the Bible talks about two things. There is ungodly counsel, and then there are ungodly people. Godly people can also give ungodly counsel, but it doesn't make them ungodly. So this person was a brother, but he was giving me ungodly counsel. You see, so the Bible says that the one who doesn't walk in the counsel of what? The ungodly. is a whole different thing. It's a whole different... This brother is a good guy, but I was giving me... He said, oh, the way you are, you are becoming too involved, no? you will put yourself at risk. But look at what the Bible says. I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Look at the last one. This is the secret. Nothing will injure you. Nothing. Nothing will injure you. Nothing. It means the devil does it. It's not in the devil's hands to hurt us. Only go with this truth. He cannot harm us. He cannot. He cannot harm us. So some, some people are holding back because they think, hey, in the night, demons will come to their room. You are watching too many Nigerian movies. So you think that when you are in the house, so like... We had an all night on Friday. Then you think, I, I went home, and then a demon just comes to my bed. It doesn't happen like that. You couldn't do anything in the church. It's my house. You are not serious. It's the same me. The same me. After that, I was in the office sleeping. You see, hey, so you have what Nigerian movies are in You say, hey, so for casting demon out of the office, or not demon out of the office, you said what? <laughs> Nothing will injure you. So it's true. Some people, because of this, they are not able to launch out. They are not able to launch out, to give everything for God. They think they can be, they can be hurt in the process. No. We are not casualties. We are not casualties. You see, we are the, ones, we are the ones rather making them casualties. We are the ones... I think the NLT is fine. Let, let, me, let me continue. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Jesus came and told his disciples, 
Okay, the New King James. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority, all power. The, the man we are serving, look at him. You see, this is why when we use his name, we must use his name knowing that this is a name filled, backed up with all authority in this world. He says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. 19. Go therefore. It means go on the premise of the authority that has been given to me. That's why you see therefore. I should have been an English teacher too. Go therefore. Hey, Bible study. When they say that you just go and read Bible. Somebody said, oh, pastor, they said you just read Bible and come and say what the Bible has said. I said, hey. You should see me learning pronouns and things. Yeah. At that time when they were teaching us in primary school, I thought, what was this? Preposition. What was the meaning of this? But now I realize that you need it to explain some things to the people. So you go back, you learn. Have you not come to church? I'll tell you, this is an oxymoron. This is this, this is this. Hey, Charlie. This is steady to show thyself approved. Steady. You, this, it doesn't come to you by reading. It comes by studying. So it says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore. Once he mentions therefore, it means it's on the premise of what he said, which is that all authority has been given. So you see, he doesn't just come to you and say, Go and preach the gospel. He tells you something first that all authority is given on, uh, to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore. So you go in boldness, knowing that nothing can happen because he has all authority. That's it. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. So my work is to what? Disciple men. Our work is to disciple men. Anytime you are preaching the gospel to your friends, to strangers, to people on the street, the, the whole point is not so that we can get them to go to church. The point is so that we can disciple them. Disciple them. Disciple them. We can disciple them. That's the work. Do you know that it's hard for us to say that I'm the disciple of this guy? It looks like, hey, like as you are sitting down, you will say you are a disciple of Apostle Johnsberg. It will be hard for you to say. It will be hard. In our time, we don't like those words. But that's what the master said we should do. We read that they were his disciples. <laughs> I'm a disciple of Pastor So So and So. He says, disciple all the nations, make disciples of all the nations. We should disciple men. So if, if you are in SLW, you are in our church, you are my disciple. That's, that's just it. There's no two ways about that. Like, unless you are not in the church. If you are not in the church, you are a visitor. But if you are in the church, my duty is to disciple you. And guess what? You see, he will ask me on that day, this guy, how did you disciple him? This lady, how did you do this? But in our time, because of the teaching of the world, you may, you may even be shy to say that I'm a disciple of this person. So you may say, oh, I, I, I fellowship here sometimes. I feel, oh, I am a mother church. I am a cup prayers. I am a cup prayers. But the master spoke without mincing words that we should disciple men. When you win somebody, you don't tell them, go to a Bible-believing church. Disciple him. You see it all over the radio. They, they preach the gospel and say, oh, you can join a Bible-believing church. Bible-believing church where? <laughs> you meet a guy on the street. You preach the gospel to him. He accepts the Lord Jesus. You say, go to a Bible-believing church. You don't, he doesn't know where the food is. You have to hold him. And, this is the food. When they gave birth to King Godson, they didn't leave him at the hospital and say, go where you can find parents and find food. Go to a Bible-believing parent. <laughs> Or go to parents who know how, how to parent. <laughs> go to parents who know, who know what parenthood is all about. They just thank the, the, the midwife. Thank you so much. You have done a good job. Thank the team, everybody. And then my man and Lady Erica just get to say, King God sin. King God, 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 King God. <laughs> King God, 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 King God. <laughs> And they just say, you know, now go to, go to parents who know what parenthood is about. <laughs> Find your way. That's when somebody is born again, he has become a baby. You, he has become, you don't leave him. You don't leave. The Bible says we should contend. 
You see, in our time, in our generation, in some ways, so we don't want to. I say, you per se, you be show face. The master, disciple the nations. Disciple them. Make disciples. Make disciples. Make disciples. One day when I send you out as a cell leader, I'm I, I like Jesus. So he doesn't know how to pretend. He doesn't know how to pretend. Ladies, I want to tell you that when there's something, me, when I tell you I'm okay, I'll not go back and say, last two weeks you did it. Once I tell you that you have done this thing, that's all. That this thing you are doing, I don't like it. Just stop it. Or you did it. But some people, hey, last five years. Last 14 years. Pastor, it all began on the 14th of June, 2003. One woman came, when I was serving my man of God, one woman came to the office. They had marital crisis. They sat down. My, my pastor said, I want you to see some of the things that happen in ministry and the encounters you have. So just keep quiet, sit down. I sat down. The woman came with her husband. Hey! Man of God. BBI started here. 14th. She mentioned the date. She said 2006. He had just returned from London. And blah, blah, blah. He started talking plenty. Plenty. And you know, one thing about those who, those who are called in the office of prophets, and most of them, they, they talk anyhow. Yeah, yeah, they like, as a moon near Kuma. Any small thing, they just tell you, just say, Charlie, this thing you are saying is too much. This is what God is saying. Go and do it or leave the office. Because you are now coming to talk plenty. We are in 2014 or 2013. You are now telling 2006. Yeah, I don't have time for 2006. What I have time for is what God is saying about your marriage. This is what God is saying the two of you should do. If you don't do it, then that's it. You don't leave the office. But you may think that one day, one day, somebody may come to the office eh, and they start talking about 2001. And we now have to sit down and listen to 2001 until 9 p.m. <laughs> 9 p.m. is now still talking. Hey. Learn to let go. Look, go therefore and make disciples. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Uh huh. Next verse. I said, whether, whether you want to be immersed in water or not, is not what is on his heart. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> teaching them. There are some people who teach that if you have not been baptized, you don't have a baptismal card, you won't go to heaven. Hey. It's not like that. Too. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. Paul says that I baptize some people, but he didn't send me to baptize. He sent me to preach the gospel. You see, John's baptism, John himself said that I'm baptizing with water, but somebody coming who is greater than me, he will baptize with the spirit and with fire. That's, that's a greater baptism. Not just the immersion in water. There's a greater one. That's why the Holy Ghost can come and you are speaking in tongues. Like that. He says, teaching them to observe all the things. Uh -huh. Teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you. And look at this. And lo, I am with you always. Even to the end of the age. You see, the Holy Spirit who has come as another comforter. Is Jesus unlimited? Is Jesus in another format? Who is with us always? How many days does he stay with us? Always. He is with us always. You see, this one too makes you know. This one, make, this one gives another knowing that anything that is happening, he's there with you. He has not left you to be alone. We have authority. Oh. All authority has been given to me. Look, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Then he says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them, blah, 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 blah. Then he says, lo, I'm with you. It means as you are going to do the mandate I'm, I've given you, know that I'm there with you. It means it's just the same as Luke 10, 19, where he says, nothing shall harm you. This one too is the same. I am with you. Don't be afraid. Maybe you have a family member. Now that you are serious with church, he say, hey, Charlie. I sorry, I will quit. You be now attack, attack. You see how they talk? They say, hey, attack. They say, oh, why are you serious? No, be now attack. I am with you. Even I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. 
even to the end of the age, I'm with you. Just like Luke 10, 19, nothing will injure you. Nothing. As we are gathered here, Jesus is here. He's here with us. As you go to your house, he's here. He's in the house with you. As you are in your car, he's, in, he's there with you. You are in your office, he's there with you. You, see, you have to rather be more conscious of the truth that he's always there. Always. So, you see, religion says when we call him, he comes. Look at what he is saying. Religion says, Ye frewa ji yensu, ji yensu, ji yensu. Ye frewa ji yensu, ji yensu. Ni pansu si, I'm with you always. So who is lying? Who is lying? You see, you can't serve God under this New Testament with the Old Testament mentality. He said, I'm with you always. If you say, as we are beginning to start this service, as we prepare to begin, let's invite the Holy Spirit to be here. Let's invite him. Let's invite him. Oh, it's not our invitation he needs. Oh. <laughs> I said, these are the things. When you say, they say you are controversial. It's not controversial. Look, he said, I'm with you all. Is it that he's lying or it is true? So what you have to know is you are with me. You are with me. You are with me always. You are with me. You are with me. This is what you have promised in your word. We just read that faithful is he who has promised. He is faithful. You are with me. Always. Always. Then we even sing songs that we are inviting him. Say, Jesus, Uh, you see, also I mean, say I come, I come now. Hey, I come now, yeah, yeah, friend. Oh, do you know that? Oh, if you travel, you you are in Accra, so you don't know anything. You are in Accra. You are in Accra, so you don't know many things. When you go out, so they say you're a friend, or ba. You're a friend, so they will do their incantations and all that. They say na come na ba, na come na ba. You serve God like you are serving your, your village idol. He said he is with us always. All you need to do is believe that he is with you. Be conscious of this, that he is with you. Be conscious. You don't need goosebumps to know that, hey, and I, I felt goosebumps, so he is with me. What about the day you don't feel it? When you feel, hey, look at goosebumps all over my body, he is with me. No. Whether goosebumps or not, he is with you. In the kitchen, as you are preparing your food, he's with you. In the washroom, as you are, as you are, as you are giving out the, the hardest and the deadliest of flavors, he's there. You are giving out the deadliest of flavors. Seriously. I used to think that it's only guys that can give some dangerous things. But somebody told me that, hey, pastor. I will, hey. <laughs> One day you marry and you know it. <laughs> Those who are married, they know already. Like Mr. Mantienko, our father, he knows. He can tell you that, hey, sometimes <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Let a lady go to the washroom and see. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. <laughs> hey, Jesus. So he's with us. Regardless of all this, oh, your friend, oh, bra, oh, your friend, oh, bra, oh, bra, oh, sunny beji, why are you, sunny beji, oh, sunny beji, this is sunny beji. Some even say they, they even devise a new, they say when, they, when they, this one goes high, his glory comes down. Oh, when the praises go up, you see, you may be caught in all these cliches, eh, and you may not know a single thing he has said in his word. What, what does he say about glory? He said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Did he say, praises go up and glory come down? I yeah, said, so you may serve God in a certain way. You may now start calling yourself things God doesn't call you. Somebody said, oh, just like Jabez. Father, do it for me like Jabez. Hey, are you Jabez? So, you see, he's with us always. Always. He started by saying, all power has been given to me. And on this premise, go and disciple the nations. 
Then he says, I'm with you always. It means as we are going about doing this mandate, we can be sure that nothing will happen. You see, he has proved this truth in the lives of some people. Though. They went to do crusades elsewhere. Armed robbers attacked them. And they still came out. They shot the whole car. Nobody died. Some they shoot, it won't shoot. He has proved it in several people's lives. Several people's lives. Several people's lives. Several. Bishop Oedipo was preaching. Somebody ran to him and poured acid on his face. Yeah, in the crowd, a woman ran and poured acid. He cleaned it with his handkerchief. The handkerchief, you see how acid reacts. The handkerchief, his face was intact. He said, I caught a revelation of this truth in the word. You see, the secret of power is what you know. How can people read occultic books and they start seeing what they have read? Don't you know that the occultic people, it's books they read. But we have a bigger book. A better book. It's called the Bible. I was just telling you that there's a difference between age in time and age in light. How much light you carry. You are now like a light emitting diode. LED. When you are going, the light you know. You'll be shining it everywhere. Say, let your light so shine. You'll be shining it everywhere. The word of God that you have stored up in your heart. Doctor said this cannot happen. There are people, doctor told them they cannot give birth. Up to now, they have not given birth. There are people, doctor told them you cannot give birth. They, they have their babies. Doctors will now say, how did you do it? They said, your womb is not there. He said, okay, you have said your womb. You have checked it medically. I don't deny the fact, but there is something. There is something in the word. There is something in the word. Other people, they, they broke down and wept and just forgot about it. Always. He's with us always. I'm closing with what verse do we read? Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Let's close with that. Matthew 18, 18. Let's close with this verse. Have you enjoyed the service? Are you carrying some light home? Light. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. You, you, let's, let's, let's keep this one for next week. Let's read Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to verse 20. Let's close with that, rather. Matthew 16, verse 13 to verse 20, please. Matthew 1, 6. Uh -huh. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? He asked the disciples, what are people saying about me? What do, who do they say I am? Next verse, please. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. That's what they were saying that Jesus is. Next verse. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? So now you have given me what people say. But you, who do you say I am? Look at this. Simon Peter answered. Peter answered and said, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. You are the Christ. You are the anointed one. The son of the living God. Verse 17. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah. It means blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. When they use Bar, it means son of. So they release Barabbas. The son of what? Abbas. Barabbas. The son of Abbas. And they took the son of God. They released the son of Abbas. They said, give us Barnabas. And they took the son of God in his place. So, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, Simon the son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. It means this answer you are giving is not a common answer. And it's not from any book, any test book. It is not from Google. It's direct from the spirit. Peter said, you are Christ. You are the Christ. The son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Uh -huh. It means that's who Jesus truly was. Or truly is. Because the man is still alive. So you can't say was. <laughs> you say is. <laughs> what a man. We don't know whether to use past tense, but present tense. Okay, present continuous. 
And I also say that you, and I also say to you, that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. Now people take this, right, and say that Peter is the one Jesus left the church with. So in the Catholic church, they say Peter is the first pope because of this. So where the pope is, it's called St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome. Because they say, and they have, an, they have images, religion, eh? They have images, and they draw somebody, they say, that's Jesus. He's giving the, the key to, to Peter to build a church. But you see, what Jesus meant by this rock is the revelation he gave, that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So that revelation is what Jesus called as what the rock. And he says, and on this rock, I will build my church. I will build my church on the revelation that I am the Christ, the son of the living God. My church will be built on the truth that I am the Christ, the son of the living God. Not on Peter. The church is too big to be built on Peter. So elsewhere, they say Peter is the first pope. Some you say, oh, Peter, this. Hey, Peter is the one Jesus gave the church to. Hey. Why well, he couldn't handle the church himself. Look, he says, like I, like I always say, you see, if you are preaching the truth, be prepared for danger. Oh. Be prepared for danger. Now, nowadays, I've been advised. In fact, I've been advised by some people. And the Spirit of God has also told me, don't talk about politics. I have people in my life who come and text me. This thing you have said, don't do it. This thing you have done, don't do it. So now the Lord told me clearly, don't talk about politics in this way again. Don't say it. So now I've told you, if you see that, please tell me. Eh? <laughs> now and there, no, no, no. I know there, no, come on. But the truth part there, it can get you into danger. Like they say, danger, wahala. But do you think Paul and Co., when they're in prison, you think it was a joke they were joking and they put them in prison? Is it the same truth? That everything is about Jesus. Men will be annoyed. They say, why is it not about us? The bishops, they say, why is it not about us? You are saying it's about this Jesus, the son of the carpenter. We want it to be about us, the Pharisees. They told us, ah, any guy is, no. Who's what about this Fianga boy? They are saying Kunu Kraus is still sorry. You see, and we, we, all we have is because of Jesus and his glories at the cross. That's all we have. There's nothing again. The best of us is nothing. Our best is nothing. Our best. That's why when, when they are saying, Lord, I'll do my best for you, I say, Eish. He said, I'll do my best for you, Jesus. I'll do my best. No, no. I'll do what's expected. There's a place that your best is not enough. It is what is expected. Anyway, I say to you that on this rock, so the revelation Peter gave was what Jesus called rock. That's the stone I will use. And the stone was what? I am the Christ, the son of the living God. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, the gates of the nether world, the gates of Hades shall not prevail. Look at what he says about the church. He says, I will build my church and what? The gates of Hades shall not. Shall not. No matter what you find on social media, people insulting the church, people attacking the church, it, Jesus said the gates of hell shall not. You, he didn't lie. Don't worry. When you see people on Facebook, they are on live, what, and they are talking, oh, nowadays church there is a scam. Church is this. Oh, we have to stop it. Our forefathers, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of, hell, the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Verse 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. This is where authority comes in. I will give you the keys. These are the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And look at what will happen. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Hey, you sitting down like this. Remember he talked about church. He was not talking about Peter. He said, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And whatever you bind... Whatever, and I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind, hey, brother, sister, use your mouth. 
As you are learning the word, use your mouth. Use your mouth. Use your mouth. There's a lot of power in your mouth. There's a lot of power resident in you. Only, only learn the word and use this power. You see, in Christ, and we don't possess. Listen to me well. In Christ, we already have, so we possess already. Some are saying, they are praying, that, Father, let us possess, oh, let us possess this thing. We already possess it in Christ. What is left is the manifestation. So the Bible says that creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. So we already have. Now what we do is what? To manifest it. He says, he has given, he gives us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever we bind, do you know, do you know that you, if you wake up in your house and you are declaring this thing, this, there's a trend you may have noticed in your family. You say this trend in the name of Jesus. I come against this trend. It will work. There's something you have noticed. I come against this thing. This thing, I lift my voice. Some of you, if you can even come together as siblings, sisters, you can hold hands and pray. A lot will happen. Because he has said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. We are like, we are like, we are like um, customs officers for God. Do you know that customs officers at the port, they say this is contraband. It's not allowed. We are, that's how, that is what he has made us. This thing is not permitted. It's not permitted. That's it. I'm talking about ideal custom officers. Like I see, I see on TV. Not a certain group I know that will take money and let you in, even though it's still banned from a certain place. But I'm talking about the ideal one where they say this thing never, it can never happen. When you watch border security on TV, border security, they say, they say it will harm the country. They can say this plant. You may say, oh, it's, it's, oh, in our country. They say, no. It will harm the citizens of the country. They check everything that enters the country. That is how he has made us. He says, whatever we bind on earth, it will be bound in heaven. That is the level of authority he has given us. See, don't neglect this authority and go begging. Whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we lose, when you say lose to this thing, it is loosed. It will be loose in heaven. Charlie, hey, what am I to me? What am I to me, Baba? No wonder Ananias and Sapphira, they came to tempt Peter. Peter said, the, the people who buried your husband, they are the door. Suddenly, no, her heart stopped beating. Hey, what authority is this? He has given us authority too much. Somebody messed up with Paul. He was called Alexander the copper smith. Paul said, I've delivered him to the devil. Paul, oh, Paul said, I've delivered Alexander. He said, he did me harm. I've given him to the devil. Not so that the devil, he said, I'm giving, so that the devil will discipline him. <laughs> but his soul will be saved. But physically, there, I want the devil to show him perfect. <laughs> I want the devil to lash him. Hey, what authority is this? Brothers, the believer in Christ Jesus has enormous authority. That is you. It's, this, is, this is not for pastors. You see, my duty is to guide you to find these things. But they are in you. A lot will happen when you start praying. A lot will, will happen when you start confessing the word. A lot will happen. Look at your mouth. Will bind, it will bind things on earth and in heaven. Your, your mouth will lose it. And you don't want to use it. Because of the power he has given. You have noticed that in your family, in a certain age, they start complaining of diabetes. You say, no way. This is the end of that trend. You say, you, fo you fold your sleeves and say, I have work to do. It's not time to work. Instead of thinking, am I the next? And you say, oh, it's our family thing. It's a condition. May God bless you. May God open your hearts to his truth. Amen.